Hey everybody, welcome back to another Creo tutorial. Today we're going to be going over layer styles in Creta and what they are. There's quite a number of them, so I'm going to break it up into multiple videos to make it easier to digest for you. So to start with, I'm going to explain what a layer style is, and it's basically applying almost like a filter or a um, special effect to the layer without destroying it. You can turn it on, you can turn it off, you can tweak it, you can just completely make it customized. It's it's an undestructive option for your artwork or your graphics. So it doesn't matter what layer you're on, as long as you're in a layer that you want to apply this effect to. I'm just going to go with the color layer, which is this stuff here. I'm going to, actually I'm going to, yeah, that should be fine. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go up to layer style. So this window opens. So this option here where it says styles, if you want to import something from Adobe, you should be able to do that in Krita. I don't use Adobe products, so I don't have anything to show, but you should be able to. I know that in the past, sometimes importing things with Adobe doesn't always work out, depending on which version you have, so just keep that in mind when you're bringing in Adobe layer styles. Alright, so we're going to go over the two first checkbox or selectable uh, layer styles that Krita has here. The drop shadow and the inner shadow. So we're going to turn this on. I'm going to move this one over here. You can instantly see that it adds a shadow to the almost like the back of the color layer and it makes it pop. So I'm going to turn that off just so we can see the difference here in the figure. It looks pretty normal. You turn this back on and it it makes, basically adds a shadow, right? It is it to the liner below because I put liner on the wrong layer, so just ignore that for now. So here you can change the blend mode. Now you may want to do this if you're looking for something a little bit different than an actual shadow. If you have color behind this, you might be maybe wanting it to change a little bit. So if we were to change this to, I don't know, let's say pink. Here we go. As you can see, I changed it to this pink color and I'm changing the blend mode and it's kind of giving me a different result than just um, what I had before. If you do dissolve, it might give it a weird look. It's got that pixely look. So you can go through and play with how that looks whatever, to match whatever it is you're doing. So the opacity, you can make it completely opaque so it's solid. You can change it to a very low opacity so it's very subtle. You can change the angle. So we can go ahead and do that. So now the shadow is kind of going more upwards. You can click on these presets if you want. Which is pretty interesting. Turn the global light on and off. Adds a little bit of an interesting look. I'm going to turn this back to black so we can see it better. There we go. You can also change the distance, which means how far is that shadow going to stretch, which is pretty neat. I'm actually going to do that. So if she has like a light source far, try to remember how this is positioned in my head. If it's far away enough, but it's harsh enough, you can have that really creepy noir shadow look to that, which is really cool in my opinion. <laughs> um, you can make the distance smaller, so maybe the shadow isn't as harsh. You can uh, make this spread more, so it's not going to be as solid, um, as far away from the figure, but it's going to be a harsher shadow. Change the size of it. So if you need a larger ex like shadow expanding around her, but not being separated from the figure or that drawing itself, you can do that too. I'm going to put this back to multiply. <laughs> I don't need it. There we go. We're gonna change opacity up a little bit. So the quality, some of these features aren't quite implemented yet, which is okay. So you can add a little bit of noise to the shadow though, which is that kind of almost looks a little pixelated. So you can add that as much as you would like. And you can anti-alias it a bit so it's not so f oh, not so fuzzy. Let me hit okay for a second so we can zoom in. Alright, so now I've checked anti-aliased off and it has a little bit of a difference. I turn that noise down to zero, it goes back to pretty smooth, I can turn this on. 
Maybe there's a little bit of banding that can sometimes help. Otherwise, you're pretty good for the drop shadow. Now, as you can see, if I hit OK and we go back to that layer I've applied it to, there's a new little icon which has effects on it. And that's basically you may put a layer style or a layer effect on it. And if you want to change it, you can always just right click, go back to layer style, and start tweaking it. Just make sure if you have a favorite setting, you save it or write down the numbers so you don't lose what you like. And if you don't like it at all and you want to turn it off, you can just unclick the drop shadow and it's gone. You don't have to like duplicate the layer and redo anything or, or anything like that. And inner shadow is pretty much the same thing, only it's going to create a shadow on the inside of your layer, depending on what you're on. So as you can see, it's added some weird effects on the inside of the color. If I were to, let's say... We're going to make that a little harsher here. We're going to increase the size. Got some weird dramatic looks to it as well. So again, this is another uh, feature where you might have to tweak the settings a little bit to get what you want. But you can see in just a couple, like just fooling around, I can get a really nice dramatic shadow across the face. And if you're not sure if you like this or not, you can always use it as a reference point later to say, hey, I like this this mood that this has created, I can at least use this as a reference for later on in my drawing to finalize a, a specific look, maybe. Alright, and that's basically it for the shadow options. We have the drop and the inner shadow. They're very similar in terms of the um, options that you have available to you. They just have different results. One is outside, whatever it is on your layer. The other is inside. The next video will go over the outer glow and the inner glow, which is pretty similar as well. It just has a glow effect, so the blend mode is a little different. If you have any questions about these two layer styles or layer style layer styles in general, let me know in the comments below. I'll do that my best to answer them. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.